Hello everyone, back tuning in to today's second video. I've already done the uh, November month head forecast. You can find that on the month head forecast page. Um, very complicated month's weather coming up this month. We've only got one model to work with. The Bayesian Climate Centre is not updating at the moment, which is making it quite difficult to do the uh, longer range stuff. So um, we're very tentatively going for a slightly cooler than average November with rainfall, perhaps a little bit, if anything, on the dry and average time. There is a bit of wintry potential in uh, November, we think, as well. So I'll let you have a look at that and see what you think. This second video is going to cover the week 10 day time frame is going to take us uh, more or less beyond the um, first 10 days of November. And I think that uh, there's been a lot of confusion about next week's weather, but I think we're beginning to get, get there a little bit in terms of uh, what's going to happen uh, next week. So I took you through everything that's going on uh, right now. We're just going to start off having a look at Central England temperature because that has uh, updated now fully for October 2017. We come out at 12.4 degrees, which is an anomaly of 1.7 degrees above average. So it has been another very warm uh, month in uh, October. Um, it's just outside the top 10 uh, warmest Octobers on record. I think it comes out somewhere around... Uh, number 12 and number 13 have to firm up on that over the next few days but just outside the top 10 in terms of the uh, warmest Octobers on record for November we're provisional uh, up to the 1st up to yesterday and standing at 10.9 degrees an anomaly again nearly 2 degrees above average 1.8 degrees above average that's going to come down over weekend aside next week because it will be turning uh, colder then if I just show you this uh, from the UK Met Office uh, climate averages um, section of the Met Office website. This shows you October's uh, rainfall uh, amounts. So um, look at the difference between northwest to southeast. Northwestern parts of Scotland coming out with three to five hundred millimetres of rain. Southeastern parts of England and the East Midlands coming out with just zero to twenty five millimetres of rain, less than an inch of rain down in the south. A huge difference from northwest to southeast. Now, obviously, western Scotland is a very wet place at the best of times, particularly in the autumn. So, three to five hundred millimetres of rain in the western Scotland isn't all that unusual. But the, what's really unusual about this is just how dry it's been in the southeast compared to how wet it's been up in the northwest. Quite rare to see such a large contrast and deviation from northwest to southeast. So looking at the uh, weather for the next uh, week to 10 days, then, this is the uh, ECMDF 500 millibar height anomaly flowchart for the 7 to 10 day uh, time frame from the PSU Penn State University website. Uh, GFS on the bottom of this chart, and I'll show you that in a second. So 500 millibars is an area in the actual high pressure, low pressure are being moved around by the jet stream running above. Red and orange will extrapolate high pressure and blue to low pressure. So the ECMDF is placing this ridge out in the Atlantic and also quite a big ridge up to the northeast of us uh, and then we've got a cut off low down across Spain and Portugal and some low pressure up here. Now this is quite an unusual pattern. I think it explains why we've had so much confusion within the model output over the recent days because we've got the jet stream coming across the Atlantic, it's going to be quite a strong jet of course being in November, going across the Atlantic and then rapidly weakening and splitting. So we're taking some of the energy up here and some of the energy is going down here into this cut-off low. And when you get this kind of situation, that is one of these scenarios that will produce quite a lot of model confusion because it is fairly unusual to see the jet stream splitting uh, like that with energy going north and south. What it means in terms of weather is that there's probably going to be a reasonable amount of dry weather with these two ridges, one to the west, one to the northeast. Um, and we may, in fact, in the end, form uh, an area of high pressure over the top of the country, although that is quite speculative. Now, the GFS isn't exactly the same. So even now, there is uh, some sort of differences between these two uh, models. What the GFS is doing, it has this ridge more centred in the central uh, northern Atlantic, uh, deeper low pressure to the north of Scotland. Also, that's the cut-off low that's more towards the Mediterranean. Uh, and rather than splitting the energy, I think generally we're just sending the energy down uh, rather like that. So it's, it's still a very unusual pattern that the GFS is going for, but it's not really going for that split 
in the jet stream that we see with the uh, ECWF. Actually, the GFS looks quite cool and unsettled here, bringing the flow out of Greenland, rather like that with this low pressure just here. Then that cool and unsettled weather goes down with the trough into the Mediterranean. Uh, looking at Lincoln for the uh, ensemble's data today. So these are the upper air temperatures and uh, precipitation ensembles from the GFS model uh, for Lincoln. The red line here is the 30-year upper air temperature average at Lincoln at this time of the year. So you can see that uh, if anything going to be a little bit cooler than average going through to next week. I think we are setting up a cooler uh, zonal westerly flow with um, generally most of the ensemble members coming out below average. Perhaps a slight warmer interlude just there around the 10th or 11th of November and then probably dropping down a little bit cooler than average as well. Overall that does look quite a cool in terms of bread temperatures anyway, quite a cool ensemble uh, for Lincoln. With precipitation, so we've got quite a bit of wet weather coming up on Saturday morning. Otherwise, the next sort of five days or so, a huge amount of rain. And then probably turning more unsettled through the course of next week, with some rainfall coming through at times. In terms of surface temperatures and air pressure, so this is how surface temperature is shaping up at Lincoln, uh, starting off at around uh, just above 10 degrees Celsius. Get this cooler interlude over the weekend, where it looks like we're going to get some night frost, both on Saturday night and on Sunday night. And then next week, overall, looking quite cool, really, staying under 10 degrees Celsius, at or under 10 degrees Celsius, with the uh, maximum temperatures. And always the risk particularly through the middle and last stages of next week, where there's a risk of a few colder nights coming through as well. They perhaps get more frequent in number as we head towards the middle part of November. That is a long way off. Relatively cool, though, I think, in terms of the surface and upper air temperatures in the uh, next week to 10 days. For air pressure, we're starting off under 1,020 millibars. Going to go quite low with the pressure over the weekend. And then a recovering pressure taking place uh, next week, back to around 1,020 millibars. A lot of scattering to the uh, second half of the ensemble chart, with some members of the GFS, GFS ensembles building in high pressure, some actually going quite low uh, with the pressure. Temperature anomalies for the next week coming out ever so slightly cooler than average, I think, for uh, large parts of the country. Let's say close to average. It's not a big deviation. Some parts of England are still ever so slightly on the mild and average side. I think Scotland, Wales, some of these northwestern areas, ever so slightly on the cooler and average side. It's not a big deviation. So let's say temperature anomalies from the 2nd to 10th of November are around average. Uh, precipitation anomalies are still coming out slightly on the drier than average side for many parts of the country. So quite cool, but fairly dry, really, for the first week to 10 days of November. So we'll have a look at the uh, GFS uh, charts then, and we're going to deal with the midnight run of the uh, GFS uh, first of all, which is uh, actually we're going to deal with six o'clock run. Of the GFS, not sure what went wrong now. I've only got the midnight run. Ah, that's the midnight run. So we're going to deal with the midnight run of the GFS first of all. And we've got this ridge of high pressure building up from the southwest on uh, Monday. Something to Monday will be quite cool, but mainly dry. It turns wet and windy on Monday and into Tuesday. Quite a lot of rain coming across the country. That rain struggles to clear the country by Wednesday. You see this elongation in the isobar, so it's struggling to push through, uh, taking that rain away from Tuesday to Wednesday. After that, the second half of next week, so high pressure down to the southwest, low pressure is up to the north. Notice the jet stream indicated by the black line here, more or less on a northwest southeast uh, trajectory. So that could be bringing some unsettled and cooler weather at times into the north and west, reasonably dry for the south. Uh, weekend of the 11th, 12th of November turns very unsettled. Low pressure deepens in the Norwegian Sea. And that turns the wings into the northwest. So another shot of cooler or even colder air is coming down here by the 12th of November, which is uh, day 10. 
as pressure rises in the Atlantic, we have this low pressure to the east. We find the winds turning into a north northwesterly direction. That's bringing a shot of cooler air down from the 11th to the 13th of November. This is the six o'clock run of the JFS, is very latest run. And again, unsettled start to next week. Rain full, gradually clearing away from Tuesday to Wednesday. It takes a little while to do it. And then we go through to the end of next week, probably making a little bit more of this high pressure down to the southwest. So the unsettled weather in the second half next week, mainly restricted to the north. The south actually has a reasonable amount of dry weather. We don't really get that northerly shot either on the six o'clock run of the GFS just keeps this high pressure centering very very close uh, to the UK notice that northerly shot then is actually going down into uh, <coughs> excuse me into northern and eastern parts of Europe finally the east of the earth this south is looking Monday to Tuesday turning unsettled wet and windy in the north and west many parts of the country look unsettled to the middle of next week beyond that high pressures extending in from off the Atlantic we finish up on day 10, bringing another system down from the northwest, and that might be starting to pull cooler air in from the north and the west of the country, probably bringing another shot of cold air down from the north. Uh, it's a really, really complicated uh, phase that we're going through at the moment. Uh, if you've been watching the videos day by day, you'll know just how complicated this opening period of November is. I'm not really... 100% so what's accounting for this very complicated weather pattern that's setting up, other than the fact that, as I say, certainly with the East Indian, yeah, we're trying to split the jet stream, which is quite unusual. I think what we can say is that next week we're going to start off unsettled, but we wet and windy weather in the northwest on Monday, pushes southeast was on Tuesday, probably has a job to clear, but by midweek should go through. Then a couple of days of drier weather. Uh, Wednesday to Thursday, then Friday and into the following weekend, that's the 11th and 12th of uh, November, we may pull down another shot of quite coldish air from the north and the west, although there is disagreement about that. But I think there's enough hints there to suggest that as we run up towards the middle part of November, we might get another, another hit of cooler air, even colder air from the north and from the northwest. So things are becoming a little bit clearer for next week, but it is a very complicated weather pattern that we've got emerging here, uh, and we just have to see how we go. I suspect there may be another couple of twists and turns about next week's weather before uh, we get to it. Hopefully things will be clear by the time I have to do a weekend forecast on Saturday. Right, don't forget to check out the uh, November month head forecast if you haven't yet done so. Tomorrow, it's JMA Friday, of course, as always on a Friday, having a detailed look at the weather for the month ahead. That's all for now, and thanks for watching.